All right, Washington State head baseball coach Brian Green joins us now to preview the uh, home series against Stanford. Uh, Cougs are uh, at home for their uh, Pac-12 home opener against Stanford. We've got a couple questions on the line, Coach. Um, if you have questions, please raise your hand and we'll call on you. All right, first question is going to be from Scott Hood. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Good, Scott. How are you? Um, just overall, just your assessment of the of the nine game uh, trip and where the team sort of stands uh, in your mind, both perhaps mentally and physically, going into the Stanford series. I think mentally we're a really good spot. Um, you know, yesterday's practice was really upbeat. We're at home. It's, we're waking up in our own bed for the first time. Really, it feels like all year. Um, you know, physically for the most part in pretty good shape. Scott, I think it was a long trip. Um, you know, it was a lot of baseball for us, which was good. Um, but, but I felt like physically, um, you know, maybe on Sunday, I saw a little bit of a first step, you know, in that middle inning, um, was not as crisp as I'd like it to be, but for the most part, our guys are in pretty good shape. Obviously we got a couple of hammies that were spread out, you know, one from an early part of the season and one from the road trip, but, um, you know, just a nine game assessment of the road trip, um, our competitiveness was good. I thought our fight was good. I thought our belief was pretty good. I thought there were a couple of games that um, that we had a little bit of, oh, here we go again, or, or any of that negativity that crept in. And we, we really tried to squash that. Um, we were able to score or we were able to get a lot of hits, but we weren't able to a lot of score a lot of runs, um, particularly uh, that, that was very evident at Arizona State where their center fielder and their outfield defense was phenomenal and uh, they took extra base hits away from us. I think that's something that we obviously need to do a better job of just getting more hits with runners of scoring position. We were able to tame down the walks. Uh, that was better. You know, that thing was a little bit out of control early on in that road trip. And, and our guys did a much better job of throwing strikes. Clearly we have some issues that we need to address and we will have a second day of practice here shortly. And, you hope to go into Stanford uh, better prepared and learning from the things that we had last week. But all in all, we like where we are, um, you know, from a positive outlook, you could certainly look at it and say we could be three and three in league right now. But more importantly for us, just are, are we knocking on the door? Are we in it? Uh, and are we in it late? Because if we are, we're going to have an opportunity to win games because our spirit's pretty good. So, um, you know, all in all, we're, we're a pretty decent spot, all, all in all, considering when you go one and five in league and you know, three and six on the road. Um, I think mentally we're at a pretty good spot. Um, you guys allowed 11 runs in the first inning at Arizona State. Yeah. Um, I mean, was it, are you dismissing that as a sort of an aberration? Um, or is, is, is that a troubling trend that you guys need to address right now going forward? No, I don't. I, I think it's, uh, I think it was real, you know, Arizona State and and the rest of the pack, you know, anything, it, it, it's been my experience and we know that, but, you know, in a, in a, in a real league, you've got to be aggressive at the plate. And because if you're not, there's real stuff behind it. And if you get behind an account, it's going to be hard to hit. So, but Arizona State's very aggressive. Um, they did a great job in the first inning and, and we were just, you know, the difference between the first inning at Goss versus being in Tempe is, is being at the knees, uh, at the outer third versus being at the belt down the middle. And, um, you know, and I think all of our guys got a little stung. I, I thought obviously Dakota, his was a little bit different. Um, you know, Dakota was a, you know, here's a flare and here's an, here's an error. And, yeah. um, you know, that's a double play on Sunday and we're positioned right. And Cody's been outstanding for us, but so Dakota really, that, that was a little misleading uh, as a, as a bad first inning, but you know, but Zane and Brandon, they were just up and in the middle and a state was aggressive and did a good job with it. So, um, you know, you hope to learn from that just in terms of, you know, get out of the middle uh, even though it's, Oh, Oh, you know, we want to get ahead, but we still want to get ahead down or want to get ahead, you know, on a half uh, or at least a third if we can. So, and those guys are capable of doing that. What's the status of Kyle Manzano and Kyle Russell going into the Stanford series? <clears throat> Manzo should be good. You know, um, he was probably okay on Sunday, uh, but he would have been jogging around the bases a little bit. And it's a long season. I wasn't interested and we weren't interested in a, in a game or two versus, you know, our entire season. So he just had a little bit of a hammy. It was a really low grade kind of a nothing, but we were just really careful with it. Those things can be, you know, really sensitive. So uh, Manzo, you'll see him this weekend. Um, and then Kyle is still kind of day to day. We'll see how he looks today. There's a chance of this weekend, most likely probably next weekend, obviously really excited to get him back. Uh, he came off to a great start and he's a tremendous athlete and 
a great player, you know, and he stretches our lineup as well. And, but Gunnar and Preston have been grinding and giving us quality of bats, but Manzo you'll see. And, and Russell is, uh, is TBA. Stanford has historically had very good pitching. They've got a bunch of guys in the, in the major leagues that have been in. Of course, they were almost uh, annual uh, visitors of the College World Series back in the, the 90s and 2000s based primarily on the strength of their pitching. So, um, I mean, is that the scouting report on Stanford going into this series? How, how is, how, uh, what is the scouting report on the Cardinal right now? They're good. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're running. Uh, they've got 28 stolen base attempts. Uh, they've got 24. Clearly that's something we need to improve at. Uh, that, that's an alarm for us going into the weekend. Um, there'll be TBA on game three, but we'll see a right. Yeah. Um, and those guys are both, you know, it's a big breaking ball on Friday night and it's pitchability on Saturday and, and movement. And, but yeah, it's Stanford, you know, it's, uh, it's typical Stanford, physical, strong, uh, but they are running and, and executing and doing a little more offensively than than I think many of us are used to. But that's also Coach Esker and, and taking that thing over and um, and it's it's pitching and defense and it's it's a lot of pitching option. And, you know, obviously, from a preparation standpoint, we're certainly prepared in terms of what we've seen. I mean, you know, we opened up probably against the best pitching staff in the league at Oregon State, just yeah. in terms of stuff and arms. And then. Uh, then you go, you flip it, and then you go to Tempe with probably the most athletic team, maybe minus Arizona in the league uh, from a position player standpoint. So we've seen both ends of, of, a, of a spectrum in terms of quality. So, but Stanford, you know, 14 and three or 14 and four, um, right. they come in with HBP and stolen bases and uh, they swing hard. They've got some strength and uh, it's going to be a great challenge for us. One final question for you. You've now coached two Pac 12 series. What have you learned about the league in those two series? that you can have to probably help, help you go moving forward now coaching in this league? You know, it's about belief and it's about culture. I just, you know, I think the biggest thing that you see uh, week to week is just, you know, depending on how athletic our roster is and the opposing roster is, it, I think it always comes down to its baseball and its matchups. And, and I think the thing that really comes across week to week in this league uh, is going to be the matchup. How do you match up? Obviously, if you look at us, we, we do have left-handed pitching, but for the most part, the guys that you see are right-handed. So when you look at a series and going into it, you know, you're looking at what's that right versus left or what's that left versus right. For us, we need to be a full strength right now, Scott. That's a big deal. You know, we need to get Kyle and we need to get Kyle back, both of those guys, to, to make sure that our lineup is stretched. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the same thing that we're always going to preach. I think the biggest thing about what we've seen over the course of the last two weeks versus the first four weeks, um, if you do, if you do lose the free base war, or if you don't have two out hitting, or if you're doing a poor job commanding the strikes on the mound or, or commanding the strikes on the play from a two strike approach, you know, you might get another crack at it uh, in week three and in the pack, you don't get another crack at it. You can't miss the fastball. Uh, and you need to fight a little bit harder because the stuff's better and the athletes better, but you know, all part of the progression that I know that we know, but um, I, I think that's the biggest thing is you don't get your second chance in the league. And, and that's from the depth and the strength of the league of the players and the talent. So, um, you know, two weeks in one in five could be three and three. Um, let's improve at executing at the plate. Let's improve at minimizing the free bases. Um, let's do a better job with uh, runners on base in terms of the running game. Those are the things that we've got to get better at going in the weekend. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you, Scott. Coach, uh, next next qu couple questions will be from uh, Madison Guernsey of the Lewiston Tribune. Go ahead, Madison. Go ahead, Madison. Yeah, Coach, first uh, Pac-12 conference home series for you as the head coach here. I know you've waited a long time. Um, I'm sure you're excited, I guess, just what are your overall – emotions uh going into the weekend really excited madison just i'm, I'm happy that uh that i get to wake up in, in my own bed and uh <laughs> you know we've been on the road a long time and i know we had that that week three with with seattle and that they were able to come here because of weather but um you know we've seemingly been on the road and we understand that that's part of the pullman experience potentially early on and we just happen to have the first two on the road in the pack um so uh, you know emotionally personally for me um, having my family, all of our coaches, families to be able to open up against Stanford, a story program. And I know all the packs storied, but um, 
home opener. We were chomping at the bit last year. Cal was coming in and we put the brakes on. So we didn't really get to experience any of the league. Um, so now the first two on the road, we're going to, we'll have a pass list. We'll have some fans, but we're supposed to have great weather. The BTO, we just revealed that thing. Um, you know, I'm really excited. I'm excited for us just in the sense of we were at home. Um, we know how our park plays. We're not, you go to Goss and there's a, there's a, there's a lineup you're going to run out there. Um, and there's a defense that you have to run out there because the ball really doesn't travel much there, particularly at night. Uh, you go to Tempe and it's a much different ballpark. You know, it depends on how athletic you are uh, on the field with your lateral and, and how quick is your team speed. Uh, and then we come back home and this place has got a chance to play pretty offensive. Um, you know, the, both Stanford and us are, are certainly going to take advantage of that because we're both pretty physical and have some strength. But um, I'm just excited, uh, you know, to, to put that Coug uniform on in a Pac-12 match and, uh, and, and be here at home. So I'm excited about that. I, I'm, I know our kids are pumped. You know, we get to have our own walkout music. We get to have our trigger music. We get to get back into routine. There's a comfort there that we're excited about having. Yeah. And you mentioned um, kind of unveiling your new clubhouse to the public yesterday. I know you guys had a, a YouTube video and then kind of a, a zoom call after that, I guess, who was all on that zoom call, what was said and what have kind of the um, receptions been like of your your new digs? I just got a text. So I know Scott Hatterberg will be here this weekend. Uh, he texted earlier. I got a text from Tom Meadenfewer. Uh, I got an email from about six uh, Cougs this morning. Uh, Meadenfewer just w was uh, uh, very emotional about the facility. He saw the video for the first time today. Uh, we've been holding that, but, but Madison yesterday's zoom was, uh, was a celebration, you know, and it was a, a celebration of all of those that have helped uh, and been a part of the project. And it was a, we revealed it to them first and said, thank you. And uh, we had a Q and A just about what the facility means to recruiting and development and uh, momentum and, and how we're utilizing it. And really it was just a, a virtual unveiling of how we do it and, and what we plan on doing with it moving forward when we get out of COVID. So um, it was an exciting day. And that video was, if you haven't seen it, it's just off the charts. It's uh, our team did a great job of just showing everything about it. Uh, there's audio dubbed in our players reactions to the doors opening and it's really neat. So uh, we'll, we'll be sending that out. Uh, I think across social media in the next day or two for everybody. And you mentioned that there will be a few uh, folks in attendance this weekend about how many are you expecting? Not sure. I know that we're just doing a pass list similar to what we did uh, in the, with the Seattle series. And I know that that was like 80 or a hundred, um, you know, there certainly will be some pro scouts, but it'll be pretty, pretty, pretty tame, I think. Um, but we're going to have pass lists. We'll have fans. So our, our kids will have an opportunity to have their families in the stands to watch them. And as will I, and as will our coaches, which means a ton to us. So, um, you know, any fan is great. And, uh, you know, we, we certainly got teased on the road. Arizona had a bunch of fans, uh, so did Oregon state. So, you know, we're looking forward and hopefully that we can get back to doing the same thing, uh, here in the state of Washington.